Herzlich willkommen, Sie Namgela, and welcome to the Bundesliga Connection with Chris Harrington on the SL Podcast in partnership with DW Berlin. It's time for the latest from Germany's domestic football league, the Bundesliga, and more. For that, we are joined by Chris Harrington from our partner station Deutsche Welle in Berlin, Germany. Chris, Bayern picked up three points on the road to extend their lead. However, Dortmund were dominant at home on Sunday against Wolfsburg to get back to trailing by one point. Yeah, exactly. Just one point. As far as Dortmund's match on Sunday, two goals from Jude Bellingham. We already knew Jude Bellingham was a star. He just reminded us with that performance. Very dominant. Six goals to none. Nearly an American football touchdown. Wolfsburg actually just outside of punching their ticket to the Europa League. So they are in more need of three points than Borussia Dortmund because almost is not good enough, okay? It really doesn't matter if you come down to one point off the championship title or four points. I think it doesn't make a big difference. You know, uh, I think it's a bit too late to motivate for Borussia Dortmund. They really needed to share some of those goals for the previous match day when they needed them more. You don't really need an outstanding three points, I think, a victory. What you need to do is stay focused on the goal. And we've seen a lapse in focus from Dortmund already that leave them one point. You know, when it comes to Bayern, they take care of business. It doesn't matter how ugly their three points are, how close of margins of victory it is. But coming off the win against Vera Bremen, you know, listening to Serge Gnabry, who not only netted a goal in this performance, but the previous match day as well, he said, we've done our job. We have a nice cushion. That was, of course, before Dortmund cut into that lead, leaving it to one point. You know, but it it comes down to uh, taking care of business. And uh, Dortmund just aren't in a good position. You know, they are are in a waiting position. You you look at, you know, uh, Bayern, who they they have next. They have Schalke next. Okay, Schalke have done themselves well by pulling themselves out of, you know, uh, relegation danger. They're pretty much, they still kind of have their feet to the fire in that sense. But they've done well. But uh, Bayern Munich, I don't think they really want to relinquish their title so easily. You know, they are chasing their 11th title in a row. And uh, and it looks like they'll get it, even though it's one point. It is exciting to see a six-goal performance from Dortmund, who will be the runner-up, it looks like. You know, uh, and then Dortmund's next opponent is not easy. Dortmund are going to have to win it out. They'll have to wait and hope Bayern drop points. Dortmund have Gladbach next. That's typically the battle of the Borussias. That's been... Uh, historically a tough match, you know, in in past fixtures. So, you know, it was an exciting weekend. Both sides won, but uh, all in all, unfortunately, it looks like some of the drama and speculation of who could win the title could be over or uh, we're getting to that point. Chris, other than the title run, what other match day 31 results had an impact on the European spots available? Yeah, well, you know, the first four look pretty solid. You know, um, and then you have five and six. Uh, Wolfsburg actually a side that needed the three points. I just mentioned that, you know, them losing that match. They're two points outside of the Europa League spots. And uh, they actually defeated Dortmund in the reverse fixture. So it is kind of odd that it was such a lopsided result in Dortmund's favor. In Mainz, Mainz, I also spoke about Schalke, Bayern's next opponent. Mainz lost to Schalke. That is a bit of a shock as well. You know, these are the two sides that look to be chasing any other teams outside of, you know, the top eight sides really have no chance, in my opinion, of reaching that. They're basically statistically out of contention, you know, but, you know, the top four look to be solidifying. Obviously, there's a big drop off when you look at three uh, and two, the the two teams running for the title uh, in Byron and Dortmund. But all in all, you know, it looks like the, the dust is settling. You know, I don't know if Wolfsburg or, or Mainz can squeeze their way in to the Europa League spot. So they're going to have to win out the rest of their matches. And I hope other sides lose. And Chris, what are your thoughts on Bayer Leverkusen and Roma in the Europa League, which kicks off on the 11th? Yeah, right around the corner. Uh, Javi Alonso has been outstanding for Bayer Leverkusen. You know, he's a young coach. He's up against a coaching legend in Jose Mourinho. Uh, I, I'm proud of Leverkusen, what they're trying to accomplish. They're trying to accomplish a repeat Bundesliga victor in the Europa League. Frankfurt won it last campaign. Now Bayer Leverkusen, you know, you look at their offense, you know, they've uh, scored nine goals on the way to this stage against Roma 
only conceded three. They have big weapons. Uh, Musa Diaby scored 14 goals, 10 assists in all competitions. Uh, he, he's been outstanding. You know, Florian Vance is back. He's been magical. You know, he's magnificent in the midfield. Uh, Leverkusen won this competition about 35 years ago in 1987. And, uh, Maybe they do well because Jose Mourinho's record isn't the greatest against Bundesliga clubs. And uh, Alonso's done himself well. There's even rumors that he might be uh, headed to the Premier League soon if he continues winning the way he has uh, been winning. He's turned that club around. And they're the last team in the Bundesliga standing in Europe. And being here in Europe covering the Bundesliga, of course, I want them to succeed. And I'm pulling for Diaby, who's been stellar so far. I'm looking for them to continue that run against... uh, Roma and uh, finish that out and get to a final. Going back to Bayern here now, Chris. Thomas Tuchel recently criticized the Senegalese star's performance. Reports suggest that Sadio Mane is up for sale. Do you see Mane ending his run at Bayern on a high note? You know, I really hope Mane does. You know, uh, it's never good when a coach publicly comments on certain things. This was in reference to Mane's first half against Hatta. He said in the first half he looked uh, very sloppy, made a few technical mistakes. Uh, you know, so that's never uh, supportive of your star player. We can't forget who Sadio Mane is. Okay, he's won. He's been the African Footballer of the Year. We know how prolific he's been in the Premier League. Bayern isn't for everyone. Germany is not for every player, every star player. You know, Premier League stars come here. I did expect uh, a great things. He was, a, of, of course, injured. You know, but all of these things coming out, you know, first to dust up with Leroy Sané and people aren't, you know, they continue talking about that. That's one reason that they say that he's up for sale. And uh, Thomas Tuchel coming out, criticizing him, you know, is not a good look. You know, I think he should figure out what he needs to do and how to use his uh, talents, you know, the talents that he does have. Bayern, of course, does have a lot of talent, but Sadio Mane, in my opinion, has proven himself to be given those opportunities. But Thomas Tuchel is not only critical of other players, he's benching other players as well. Thomas uh, Müller has been benched by Thomas Tuchel, and he hasn't really given a good reason for that, saying Thomas uh, Müller, every match is a match for Thomas Müller, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, who knows uh, what is in the future for Thomas Tuchel. Of course, Bayern have proven one thing. No matter how much money they shell out for a, a coach, his future is not guaranteed. So, you know, Bayern have one thing on their plate. They have to focus on winning the title. You know, in, in, in regards to Sadio Mane playing well, I mean, we know he's talented. We know he can play well. Uh, he needs to keep doing so. And I, I'm looking forward to seeing him depart because Bayern and Mane haven't been a good fit, let's be honest. And I'm looking forward to him resuming his career in the Premier League where he's been the best. And just like always, before we let you go, Chris, what else has hit your radar? Yeah, one thing did pique my interest. Jaden Sancho, a former Borussia Dortmund star, he's reportedly desperate to return to Borussia Dortmund on loan rather sooner than later because things haven't worked out for him in the Premier League, but he was the toast of the town when he he was at Dortmund, and uh, he's looking to get that mojo back and possibly return on loan. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that if he does indeed return because that potentially could be a boost to see Borussia Dortmund uh, dethrone Bayern Munich. And uh, that's about it I have in terms of rumors. And we have some transfer news and rumors and so forth, which I'll be touching on on the uh, weeks to come. Thank you very much for the Bundesliga update, Mr. Chris Harrington from our partner station Deutsche Welle in Berlin, Germany. Have a fantastic day further. Danke schön und auf Wiedersehen. The Bundesliga Connection is a team effort driven by the following incredible individuals. The show is hosted by Aidan Hewitt and Chris Harrington. It is produced by Chris Harrington. It is edited by Aidan Hewitt and Uli Presch. And graphics are provided by David Scullard.